Polymers are a fertile ground for XPS and the reason for this is that carbon responds to chemical environment by shifting peaks in binding energy. So in this particular polymer, which is cellulose, we have carbon atoms that are singly bonded to oxygen and otherwise bonded to carbon and hydrogen. And we also have carbon atoms that are bonded to oxygen twice and once to carbon and hydrogen. And these two different chemical states produce shifted peaks. In addition to shifting the peaks, the XPS signal also is representative of the number of such atoms in these different chemical states. So looking at this cellulose polymer, we have 10 carbon atoms that all have the single bond to oxygen, and we have two that are bonded to oxygen twice. So we would expect to find two component peaks within the carbon 1s envelope in the ratio 5 to 1. We'll now look at some cellulose XPS data. And these have been saved in a VAMAS format. And the file extension is .vms. And when we select the Open Toolbar button, we get a dialog window that displays the VAMAS files in a particular directory. In this case, there's only one VAMAS file. If we select and then press Open, data are then opened up and displayed in CAS XPS. We've got spectra showing in the left-hand pane and these represent the VAMAS blocks that are selected at time of opening in the right hand side so this is the first row whereas these other VAMAS blocks represent more measurements from the same material and if we double click on any of these you can see the individual spectra that are associated with these VAMAS blocks. For cellulose we are expecting to see just oxygen here and carbon and although there is hydrogen, we can't measure that by XPS, so we have to be content with seeing two peaks that are associated with these two elements. So that is consistent with cellulose. However, if we look at the corresponding carbon 1s peak, we can see a, an intense peak at one binding energy. Then we've got a, some shift signal, and that could be the other carbon bonded to oxygen peak. But we have a third peak here that represents a different type of carbon and this could be carbon that is bonded only to carbon in which case we would expect that to appear at a, a lower binding energy but as it stands we have a set of three peaks that we can only guess at what the binding energies actually are because these data are from an insulating sample and the binding energy scale is shifted by the charge compensation that is used to stabilize a peak position. So there is one other alternative that this peak here could be some type of charge compensation not working as well as it ought to. So let us now have a look at the oxygen peak. The difference is 1.5 EV. So if I look at the oxygen peak, if I go 1.5 EV here. Well, if this was charging, we might expect some oxygen to also charge, in which case we might see a splitting of this oxygen peak at around about the same sort of offset, but we don't see it. So this low energy binding energy peak is probably due to some contamination of the material or some impurity within the material that is producing a, a CH type peak. In order to take advantage of the information that XPS delivers, we need to calibrate the binding energy scale, and this will then provide us with the means of identifying binding energy values that are associated with these different peaks. We expect these binding energies to match the bond states that we have for cellulose. We also expect the ratio of these peaks to be in the ratio of 5 to 1 for cellulose. So we need to have a means of calculating intensities where we have overlapping peaks. And this is the realm of fitting components to data. So we would produce a peak model in the first instance that contains three components with the objective of calculating ratio of peaks and comparing the ratio that is calculated against the 5 to 1 that is expected for cellulose.